This is a continuation from part one of this presentation. Things get a lot more interesting when you have uh, output of something you click on and then you double click on its output in turn. It lets you give uh, arbitrarily uh, uh, nested menus. Uh, for a directory, it's kind of obvious what to do. You just show the contents. For code, if you double click, uh, it, show, it puts the output underneath. What's the uh, sensible thing to do here? Uh, when you double click on this, what it does is it passes this as a parameter to this method. If you have a dot, it assumes this is a method and it invokes this method on this class. So using these two things, you can make interfaces out of just plain classes. How about for a select statement? What's the uh, sensible thing to do here? Well, if you edit this and double click, why not save it back to the database? So if you collapse that and expand it again, you can see that the, the change was saved. Same thing with running model code in Rails. If you modify this and double click, it saves it back to the database. You can create menus for general purposes. Here's the Rails menu. Uh, you can double click on this to start. If you want to generate some stuff, you can double click or click on the plus. Let's say we want to generate a resource. It prompts us for a name, starfish. And then it gives us some example fields to use. And then when we double click on this, it shells out to create the resource. Another way of creating menus is to have a class and have the uh, menu invoke methods on it when you double click. For example, I can uh, evaluate this class and then I will be able to type Sharky and double click and it will invoke the menu method, which is the convention, a class method named menu. If you want to have another option, you can uh, modify the class and if we launch this again, you'll see it take effect. And you can save the class into a directory named menus in your home directory and uh, the menus will be loaded. It's the easiest, simplest way I could think of of, of making a menu. If, if anyone has any ideas of other easy ways of making menus, I'd love to hear them. Go to ziki.org and click the mailing list link and send us an email about uh, other ideas. This is an even simpler way of creating a menu. Uh, you can just type the menu items that don't exist and then type a keyboard shortcut to define the menu. And now you'll be able to type shark and double click and you'll see the menu items. If you double click on one of these, since it doesn't do anything, we just made the menu items, it will prompt you to create a class that uh, will have some code that will be run when that uh, menu is, is clicked on. And it walks you through how to, how to save the class. To make a, a menu that's like we saw before, just menu items, you put that in the menus directory in your home directory as well and just give it a dot menu suffix. And of course, it's just a plain text file. So as I mentioned before, if you have any other ideas, uh, uh, let us know and, and I'll implement it. Here's a use case for a menu. Let's say we've got this sharks project again and we do a lot of stuff pretty frequently and we want a more efficient way of, of running things than the menu that we created earlier. You can create a sharks menu that has a few things that you do frequently. Going to the app in the browser, starting the app, interacting with some of the models. Um, this 
at is the syntax for delegating to another menu. You can add all of them to this sharks menu. This is a way to navigate the source. And then if you want to change it, let's say we added an admin, an admin interface. You can modify the menu, type a shortcut, and then the next time you type sharks, your changes will be there. And of course, this is just a sharks.menu file in the home directory uh, within menus. You can type a keyboard shortcut to show all of the menus you've run recently. Here's our recent history, and you can type to narrow down and run something again. I'm going to move the window over again so you can see the browser. Uh, these are some menus that control the browser. This will tell it to show this HTML. This menu will run this CSS on whatever is in the browser after it loads jQuery. And this will run some JavaScript. Let's look at a couple of the more advanced menu interfaces you can make in Ziki pretty easily. I'll type a keyboard shortcut to look at the git diff for the Ziki project. I've got a pretty massive commit coming up here. You can um, expand and collapse to see the changes. You can uh, double click or type command enter to uh, jump to the file. You can hide the stuff that you don't care about. Uh, and then commit just those files. If you try to commit, it'll prompt you to type a message. And if you double click again, it'll actually do the commit. That was a presentation showing how Ziki tries to be a better interface for running shell commands and other types of commands with a, a emphasis on uh, Ziki's Rails features. Uh, go to ziki.org and click the code link to see the GitHub page and install and try it out yourself. And go to uh, ziki.org and click the mailing list link to join the Google group and send us an email.